Right, check these out. Super soft, fluffy pancakes oozing with melted chocolate and drenched in a raisin and mixed spice syrup. They are topped off with a rum butter, but that syrup, that screams of Christmas and it just turns these into the perfect festive pancake. Now this recipe makes five proper pancakes packed with attitude. You're gonna find the full recipe linked in the video description below. Now I should say that through my testing, I found that using a yeasted pre-ferment produces the softest result, but you can definitely swap that out for a ripe sourdough culture. I'll leave a copy of the recipe formula on the blog just in case you wanna make some adjustments. Right, so I make the pre-ferment up the night before I'm gonna make the pancakes, and I'm gonna do that along with the raisin syrup and the rum butter. That way, it's easy to fit the brunch in the next day, especially if you're gonna be making this on Christmas morning. Now, just so you know for scheduling, you can make that pre-ferment up 12 to 18 hours before you plan to make the pancake batter. Now, I'm adding 35 grams of water, 0.3 grams of instant dried yeast, and 35 grams of soft flour to a mixing bowl. I'm gonna give everything a really good stir, but the mixture doesn't need to be completely smooth, but you do wanna make sure that there aren't any dry pockets of flour. I'm gonna cover this mixture, and I'm gonna leave it out overnight at room temperature to ferment. Now, mine's gonna be bubbling away at 23 degrees Celsius. Now, I like to use micro scales to measure the yeast for the pre-ferment, and if you bake regularly, they are definitely worth investing in. But, if you don't have scales that weigh in increments of less than a gram, then use just enough dried yeast to cover the tip of a teaspoon. So, for the raisin syrup, we're gonna combine 150 grams of golden raisins, half a teaspoon of mixed spice, 75 grams of golden caster sugar, the juice of half a lemon, and 225 grams of water in a pan. We're gonna pop that onto the heat, we're gonna bring the mixture up to a gentle boil, and then simmer it gently for 10 minutes. Now the first head chef that I worked under in London, he'd been the senior sous chef to Gary Road, so our kitchen was heavily influenced by his modern British dishes. And this cheeky little syrup was one of his, so full credit goes to Gary for this one. This syrup really does scream of Christmas. It adds this tartness and really contrasts the sweetness of this dish perfectly. Right, so while that syrup is bubbling away, we can get this rum butter prepared. So in my bowl, I'm gonna add 100 grams of room temperature unsalted butter that's been roughly cut into cubes. Next, I'm gonna add 100 grams of icing sugar and a very healthy splash of rum. You could use brandy, it's Christmas, add the tipple of your choice. Next, I'm gonna work that mixture gently with a fork just to combine the sugar before I get an electric whisk in there to cream it properly. Now, if you stick your electric whisk in before you roughly combine the ingredients, prepare yourself to get covered in a cloud of icing sugar. Now, don't forget to keep one eye on the syrup that's ticking away on the stove. And don't stress, if you haven't got an electric whisk, you can definitely use a spatula instead. It will just take a couple of minutes longer. And then once the mixture's smooth and it's fluffy, it's ready. Now this recipe does make plenty, but you can keep it in the fridge for several weeks. Now after our syrup has been bubbling away for about 10 minutes and the raisins are nice and plump, we can blend the mixture until it's nice and smooth. But what you wanna do is check that consistency. It should pour like warm honey, so if it's a bit stiff, add a splash more water and then blend it again. You just wanna repeat that until you've achieved the right consistency. We're gonna pass this syrup through a fine strainer and then just use the back of a spoon to work that mixture backwards and forwards so we don't waste anything. We can then cover this and keep it in the fridge until it's needed. Right, so it's the next day, the big day. It's pancake day. We're gonna weigh 100 grams of milk into a glass and we're just gonna set that to one side. And then in a small saucepan, we're gonna add 83 grams of milk. Now I'm gonna add two grams of vanilla extract, 11 grams of unsalted butter, 11 grams of honey, and four grams of salt. Now I'm gonna gently heat that milk over a medium heat until the butter and the honey have melted and everything's well incorporated. I'm gonna weigh 1.8 grams of instant dry yeast and just sprinkle that over the top of the pre-ferment that we made yesterday. Now, as soon as the butter is melted, add the cold milk that we weighed out earlier, and that's gonna cool the mixture down. Now we can add in one medium-sized egg and give that a quick whisk with a fork to combine. Add this mixture to the bowl with our pre-ferment 
and the dried yeast. And then after another quick stir, we can add in 183 grams of soft flour. Now the flour that I'm using has got a protein content of just 10%, and that is perfect for making things like pancakes. When we use a soft flour with a low protein content, the resulting batter or the dough is nice and soft. It doesn't build lots of gluten, so it's soft to eat. That's the key to getting the right texture for these pancakes. We're gonna mix the batter, making sure there are no dry clumps of flour. It definitely doesn't need to be completely smooth. A few lumps are fine. This mixture will sort itself out as it ferments. In goes 86 grams of dark chocolate, which I've broken into large chunks. They're about the size of my fingernail. After one final mix, this is gonna get covered and it's gonna be left out at room temperature to ferment. Now, after about two hours, that mixture should be nice and puffy and doubled in volume. That means we're ready to cook. Now, the baking timeline for these pancakes is on the recipe blog, but I've also included an alternative schedule just to give you a couple of options. Now, you can use a heavy base non-stick pan or a cast iron pan to cook these pancakes. I'm using a cast iron pan and it's been preheated on a medium low heat. That's setting number four out of nine on my stove. And for all of you number crunchers, the surface temperature is 139 degrees Celsius. So I'm gonna melt some butter in the preheated pan, give that mixture one last stir just to reduce the volume and make sure that chocolate is kind of evenly mixed throughout. I'm gonna add two heat tablespoons of the batter to the pan and gently spread it out into a round shape. I'm gonna pop that pan back on the heat to cook. Now, don't be tempted to flatten that mixture out too flat when you pop it in the pan. We want these pancakes to have some volume so that they encase the chocolate and protect it as it slowly melts. Once the pancake is golden on the bottom, we can flip it over to finish cooking. Now, I'm sure you can easily squeeze two or three pancakes into your pan at once. So you're just gonna repeat this process until the batter's all been used up. You've got a nice stack of pancakes. After they're cooked, you can drizzle with that warm raisin syrup and top with a rum butter. Mmm. They're really good. Wow. We've got this wonderfully soft pancake, but it's thick enough to envelop that chocolate and protect it as it gently melts through the pancake. We've got that lovely tart syrup and then the rum butter on the top. This, definitely one for Christmas morning. You'll find all the details you need on the recipe blog. Now, if you wanna know my take on ultra complicated sourdough recipes, then check out this video here. A huge thank you for watching. I'll see you again very soon. Stay tuned.